how would you describe the Laura Almanzo relationship in the first episodes? Um, I guess I, I would describe it as being um, uh, I was sort of the 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 the, the unavailable man. Um, I was the I was unaware of her. Uh, I'm somewhat older than she is. I'm working on my farm, trying to get things going, and she's this cute little girl going to school in Walnut Grove as a student in uh, my sister's class, and and she's just she's really not a factor in my life at all. But but for Almanzo was there obviously to be an object for her, someone to dream about, to wonder about, to uh, fantasize about, to wherever that goes, you know, and she had those conversations with Ma up in the, you know, up in the loft and and she's combing her hair and they're talking about things that, you know, that women start to talk about when, uh, when there's interest in a man. Um, but I was there to be, um, it was an interesting dynamic because what was important about this is that you. you had to believe that the audience needed to believe that Almanzo was you had to be able, the audience had to be able to like him that was important the audience also had to feel that he wasn't going to be threatening but he also had to be a man so it's like there's this really and it was really um so Michael kept it very at arm's length, um, never allowed it to get in any way over the line. We did get letters from people who said, how can you, how can you pair these two people up? This is, you know, this is, you should be, uh, I remember one letter said something about you should be, uh, you should be barbecued, the producer should be barbecued on his, over a spit because they were, they were pairing up this, you know, having this, 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 older man swooped down on this well it wasn't that way at all we were we kept it very very at arm's length laura was always in control of the uh, of the situation and you were seen on the arm of different girls in each sure. episode <laughs> that's true there were always that's right there there were always i forgot about that see my my heart always belonged to laura i never remember any of those other girls but yes, there were a lot of other, uh, they brought in a lot of one episode people for Almanzo to be dating or to be seeing. And of course, these girls were never ever seen again. They, they were there one time and they were gone. So, um, but they did serve the purpose. They gave her something to stew about and to worry about and to be jealous of. And it was all very, it was fun. You know, it was fun for the audience to watch Laura plot and plan to see how this was going to go. Do you remember the first kiss that she gave you? This was at a this the first kiss that she gave you that she gave me. Uh, wasn't it at a dance? Wasn't the wasn't the first kiss at a dance? Yeah, that was the first real kiss. But the first, there was another one before oh, when she kissed you that she gave me, but without me getting it. No. <laughs> Yes? No? In the circus episode. In the circus? Oh, that's right, because she was a clown. Yes. <laughs> I'd forgotten about that. She was a clown, and she came up and gave us a little kiss, and we didn't know who it was. <laughs> she knew, but I... Oh, you're good. <laughs> but I, I, uh, I had forgotten about that. And then there was the episode that you just mentioned at the dance, Sweet Sixteen, yes. when Laura suddenly becomes grown up and you fall in love. It was, uh, Sweet Sixteen was, uh, I think, one of the favorite episodes of, for people of the Laura and Almanzo courtship, and it really was where the courtship happened. It was uh, once, once, uh, once Laura grew up, as it were, going off to teach school, and her clothes changed, and the heels came, and we started to see a little bit of a figure on her, and the hair went up out of the, out of the, out of the pigtails, and uh, uh, yeah, she was, she suddenly became a very different, um, Laura did become a little different in that episode, and there's a funny story about that kiss. You want to hear that story? Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> this was really fun. Um, 
you know, this was, you would have thought that this was like, um, there was a lot of security on the set that day. And I remember distinctly Melissa's mother, Barbara, being off camera during this kiss and crying uncontrollably as the kiss was getting ready to happen. And they had to stop the take like three times because Barbara is sobbing off camera. And uh, it, or just she would be breathless over this. And, uh, and you should, it, Michael coming up to me said, you know, giving me warnings that, you know, this, you better do this right. And, uh, and uh, people looking at me like I was like this, this wolf in the night, you know, coming to, to steal little uh, Laura away. Um, but I do remember, I just remember listening to Barbara Abeles cry uncontrollably off camera waiting for this kiss to happen. When it finally happened, you know, there was this sort of relief on the set and uh, and the of course the NBC photographers were there and this the pictures are snapping and uh, and it was restaged several times and it was it was uh, it was a big moment but I, I don't know that this wasn't her first kiss or one of her first kisses in her life so uh, I, and I don't know the answer to that but it was certainly treated like it was maybe her first kiss in her life which added a, a certain sense of responsibility to the whole thing Thank you so much for sharing these memories of season <laughs> <Sure>. six. <laughs> sure.